Okay, it's like 9.30, so let's get started. Um, uh, today, we get started with this nice presentation on building AI-powered applications on Postgres by our great host, um, presenter, uh, Adam Handel. Um, so let's give him a hand and get started. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be talking about uh, building some applications on Postgres using AI tools, mostly focusing on the open source tools that you can use to build um, applications using various AI techniques. Um, it's kind of primarily three use cases that I'm going to walk through, um, and it's going to be mostly demos, so I'll be showing some SQL code up here and live coding, so it could, it could go, go wrong. Uh, but we're going to walk through semantic search using embeddings, um, and then multimodal image search. So we're going to search images with text and search images with other images and then build uh, a RAG application, kind of like a question answer bot uh, using just SQL. And hopefully leave a lot of time for Q&A at the end. Yeah, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a founding engineer at Tembo. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what Tembo is doing. I've been using Postgres my entire career. I spent most of my career in analytics and machine learning. Um, and I pretty much always went to Postgres to use it for wherever I needed a data store. Um, and it never failed me. So uh, n now I have work on building extensions and uh, work on the cloud platform at, at Tembo. And some of the extensions uh, I've built are PGMQ, which is a message queue, PGLater, which gives you asynchronous query execution in Postgres, and then PGVectorize, which I'm going to show a little bit today. So a little bit about Tembo. Uh, Tembo is a managed Postgres platform. So we have a, a cloud service where you can provision Postgres clusters. But each one of our clusters is tailored to specific workloads. So we have kind of what we see on the left is these different types of stacks that we can deploy on Tembo. So there's the, the vector database. Um, and these are all powered by open source Postgres extensions. So our vector database would be like the alternative to Pinecone or Weaviate. Uh, our search stack is an alternative to Elasticsearch. And we use ParadeDB's uh, PG Search extension in that stack. Our analytics stack is, well, I guess my slide's out, out of date here, but uh, analytics stack is powered by PG Analytics. And then our message queue stack is powered by PGMQ, our message queue extension. So the three demos I'm going to walk through is based on text, images, and RAG, like I mentioned before. So semantic search, multimodal image search, and then we'll build a little bit of a question and answer bot. Uh, but search, first we'll do semantic search. So a little bit about like what that is. There's Full text search or keyword search, which a lot of people are familiar with, where you're looking in a, your database to try to match keywords. Uh, but in the last 10 years or so, various transformer models that have been trained on large amounts of data have been, become widely available to us. And we can use those models to take text and transform them into embeddings. And we basically use the embeddings to, to search. Um, so you take text, turn it into numbers, and then you do math on the numbers to search. And that semantic search is useful because now you don't have to necessarily re require keyword matching. You can, you can search for like uh, soda and get Coca-Cola, or you could search for like bags of potato chips and get various types of potato chips, even though the words don't exactly match. Uh, so the demo that I'm going to do here is uh, kind of like how this is set up, is there's a Postgres database and then a container running next to Postgres that hosts an, an embedding model. And we're going to use an API, a SQL API, to take a table in Postgres and generate embeddings from that whole table and then search that table. So I'm going to be kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit between uh, slides and 
D. Beaver, my IDE of SQL editor of choice. Okay, so have to reconnect to the database here. Let's drop the table. Okay, so we have this table in Postgres, and hopefully everyone in the back can see this. Uh, I'll just show 20 records here. So there's, there's a table in Postgres, it's called products. Every row is a separate product. Um, so like the first record here, it's a pencil, it has a description, you know, pencil used for writing, works best on paper. And to do vector search on this, we need to get embeddings for everything in the table. So you could do this in Python, you could do it in Ruby or whatever language you're working in. Um, and you, what you would basically need to do is query the table, pull all the data out of your database, call a transformer model that you're hosting somewhere, and then put that data back in the database, create an index on it, and now you would have embeddings for all, all of your data that's already, already there. Um, but we, we have this extension called Vectorize uh, that we built at Tembo. It's open source, Postgres SQL licensed. Um, and this kind of, it, it's built on top of PG Vector, and it gives us a hook into that container that I mentioned that is running next to Postgres that's hosting a, a transformer model. So all this works is you call vectorize table and we give it a, a project, a job name here. This is basically the, the link of what's of this table to which transformer model we actually want to use to generate our embeddings. So we give it a name, point it at a table, specify the primary key on the table, and then we, we need to tell it like, hey, which columns do we actually want to generate embeddings for? Usually it's the text-based columns. So in this case, product name and description has the text we actually care about. So we put, uh, we say, hey, product name and description, and then those get concatenated. And then transformer, this is pretty important. Uh, this, uh, this supports any transformer model from Hugging Face. These are a bunch of open source models that are there. We can also use OpenAI's models that we would have to pay for, or Cohere. There's, there's several different providers that, that are compatible with this. And then finally, schedule. Uh, we'll just specify real time, and I'll demo what this means, but it's basically whenever data in this table then changes, new data comes in, or we update an existing record, we're going to update the embeddings uh, immediately. So. When I run that, uh, what we did is created some background jobs that a background worker is then reading the table. Uh, that background job works with our message queue extension, which we basically build a job queue out of it. And it takes all the data from that table, from those two columns, generates embeddings, and puts them back into Postgres. So once those are done, then there's just one other function that we call, vectorize search. And then we specify the same job name that we used when we called our table function. And then our, we pass in a, our raw text query and which columns we want to return from, from our query and, and then kind of like a limiter, so the number of re results. So in this case, I search for accessories for mobile devices from that table. And we can kind of see here. So we got back. So yeah, so the, the first one was, or the second record was a keychain. first one was a phone charger, third was a luggage tag, so it's okay. Um, we probably want to experiment with different embedding models, but the idea here is we, we boil this down to two function calls. There's one, one function call to generate embeddings for our existing data, and then another function call that, that we use that takes care of transforming this query into embeddings using the exact same transformer model that we used to set up the table. Let's see here. So if we, we can kind of inspect what, was, what happened here a little bit. So our framework creates, a, it puts the embeddings in a separate table, but it also creates a view over our source table and the table that contains the embeddings. So we can see here there's all our products, 
and then the embeddings and the timestamp that the embeddings were updated at here. So embeddings, this is our array of floats. Um, yeah, and just to demonstrate, so the, the results come back in, in JSON, but we can, we can parse that out if we want to. So we'll do the same query, but instead of JSON, we just parse that out and can kind of get a, something that is formatted as a table as well. Um, so <clears throat> we used our search API to, to make this call, and that kind of orchestrated everything for us under the hood. But if we want to go around that search API, uh, we can like hand roll our SQL if we want. So it's a little bit harder to see. Uh, but, but we can we can call vectorize in code and generate our embeddings directly here and then do similarity search on our embeddings and then join to whatever table we want as well. So point of this is that we do have the flexibility to go around our API that kind of extract, abstracts everything from us. We can generate embeddings directly as well. Um, okay, so that was like the, the first step. We had our data in Postgres and then we can quickly do vector search on it. Um, but typically we get new data and we update data, so let's add a new product. Um, so most of the products in this database that we have are like consumer goods, so let's add uh, a, a line item that is pizza. So pizza, a dish of Italian origin, origin you know, and then if we search, search that, so we'll search for cooking and food items now. So we get spatula, and then there's our, our pizza record, which came back so that is the second most relevant result. Yeah. And a, a pencil. Yep. So, uh, so what happened there is we inserted a record. Uh, vectorize creates triggers on the table, and we use those triggers to, to create the background jobs that generate embeddings. Um, so new, record, new data comes in, automatically get embeddings, and then we can also update data that's in the table. So now we'll change that pizza record to a sleeping bag. So now if we search, uh, do that same search for cooking and food items, we no longer get pizza because that product ID has been changed to a sleeping bag, but if we search for tents and camping gear now, now, now our sleeping bag is, is the most relevant item in the, in the database. So the idea here is that there's a lot of this maintenance that, that comes kind of after you initially set up your vector search project, uh, Vectorize helps us kind of automate that and keep everything up to date. And we can just inspect the metadata here. There's, there's a table in the Vectorize schema that keeps track of all the parameters of, of how this job is configured. Okay, so that was the, the semantic search use case. Um, it's used in a lot of, uh, a lot of people use it in RAG as well. They'll use vector search to search all their documents to build other AI applications. Um, and I'll show that a little bit later, but next up we're going to look at multimodal image search. So, um, so basically what this is, is we're also gonna generate embeddings from images, put those embeddings in Postgres, and then use those embeddings to search images. So not necessarily putting the images directly in Postgres, but we'll put the embeddings from the images in Postgres. And we'll use a special type of, of model. Let me put this large again. Uh, the, instead of a sentence tram transformer here, we're going to use uh, this class of models that are based off uh, a clip, this paper called, uh, called Clip that OpenAI published a couple years back. It's not as popular as, as their large language models, um, but they're, they're very useful. And other, other organizations have, have built models um, based off this, of this paper. Basically, these, model, these models are trained on 
images and descriptions of images. So you have a, a, a picture of a dog and a description of like, you know, dog wagging, brown dog wagging its tail or something. And they have a massive corpus of images and descriptions and they train a model on that data. And then we can use the weights from that model along with a couple, two different encoders. So an encoder for images and an encoder for text. And now we can get embeddings from images and embeddings from text that are in the same embedding space. And now we use uh, these embeddings that are in the same embedding space and we can do cool things with it like vector search. Basically the exact same thing we did with our text uh, example that I just showed you, but we do it now with images. So, um, how, so how this kind of looks is like, let's say we have a product catalog consisting of two items, uh, a red cup and a picture of a cell phone. We put the embeddings from these images in Postgres. And then uh, a user can come up and query mobile devices. And then we use the text encoder and the same uh, model to put the, to do vector search then from that text query against the embeddings from the images. So in this case, user would search mobile devices and they would get back the, the image of the cell phone. And the image to image case of this is same data in Postgres, but a user can provide this image of a different cell phone. We transform that image into embeddings and then search the embeddings in Postgres and you get back the same result. So if you've ever seen, I think a lot of different uh, companies out there have the, the feature where you can take a, a picture of like a piece of clothing and circle it and then search, search that image and find products that look like that image. It is probably doing something similar, similar to this. Okay, so all this is kind of set up here. Um, I'm running all the, I'm gonna run all this demo on my local laptop, but you would, how you would build this for yourself is you'd probably put your images in uh, a cloud storage bucket like S3. Then you'd have Postgres with PG Vector running in it for embeddings. Then you'd have your user application that kind of or orchestrates the calls to a hosted, your hosted clip model somewhere. So for this, uh, we're gonna look at a, a Jupyter Notebook. So there's a bunch of Python code here that I'm gonna kind of skim over. I'll explain what it does. Um, but we have a data, a data set that is from Kaggle. It's Amazon products. And for every product, there is an image. So we have pictures like this book, some phone, another phone. Let's see what else we have. Some electronic devices, etc. So this is our this is our product catalog that we're going to use for for the demo. And it, again, these are all these are all this is all running on my my laptop right now. Um, so this whole demo, it's using uh, the transformer, Transformers library. Uh, this is one of Hugging Face's Python libraries. And we're just using OpenAI's, uh, one of their early clip models for this. So this is, the, this is the model that we'll be using to transform our text to embeddings and all these image to embeddings. And then I'm just running Postgres on localhost. Um, so by the way, all this code, uh, there's a link for it at the end. It's in a Jupyter Notebook on a public repo if you want to pull it down and, and try it for yourself. So basically we take this, uh, this product data set. So it looks something like this. It's records of uh, items. And then we download all these images and save those images locally. Then we're instantiate uh, our, our clip models. There's one for the, the text processor and one for the image processor, but they're all based off of that same clip model. Uh, we need some queries to get our data into Postgres. So we're creating a table, just calling it image embeddings, two columns in it, one for, one for the embeddings themselves. And this is uh, a vector data type uh, using PG vector. And then the image path here, it's 
It's just uh, a pointer to where the image actually is. So this is, if you're building this application, this could be like the path to the bucket in S3. Uh, then we have just a, a, a basic upsert statement. Um, and then uh, utility function that we're going to use um, to generate embeddings from our, our local. Oh, and I, I already ran this, so I'm, I'm not gonna run it again. And so every, everything here is just kind of the orchestration stuff. And this is probably what most people are gonna care about here is basically it's, it's the exact same vector search query that you would use for text. You've probably seen a query like this if you've watched any talks on PG Vector in Postgres, we do the exact same SQL query, except we're searching the embeddings then from, from our images. So, okay. So I'm just gonna take a look in Postgres real quick. So I connected to the wrong database. Yeah, this one. There we go. So we have a table here. It's image in embeddings. Let's see, maybe I can. So there's, there's our two columns, there's the path to our image, and then a column for the embeddings. We didn't create an index on this for this demo just because there's not, there's not a ton of data in this data set. Um, but, uh, so here's what, then what we can do. So we have a, our raw text query like arts and crafts. We can get the embeddings from our text, then execute our similarity search query in Postgres, and then we're just gonna print out the images that we get uh, that are most relevant. So we'll just load those from our local host. So if we search for arts and crafts, let's see, try to get this size down. Arts and, let's see, arts and crafts. So we get scissors, this image that I'm not totally sure of what that is, uh, and then our purple glue, purple glue stick. We can try another query here. So we'll search for mobile electronics. And we get the cell phone, another cell phone, vintage wireless home phone. I, had, I definitely had one of those phones. I think that exact one. Maps and cartography. So we get the Randon McNally Road Atlas and some less relevant results. And just for some fun, we can search for Cher. So Cher, the famous music musician. Um, I already know that there's some things in there related to Cher, um, but we get uh, this item and then a couple of Cher's albums. So what's really cool though about that is there's, uh, there's no text that we used to generate these embeddings. It was just, just the images. And the models are trained to pick up on different features within the images. Um, you know, so that in this training set, presumably, there were uh, probably some images from the internet with descriptions of share. So that's how our model knows that like share, uh, the text share is related to, to these particular images. So this is the text to image search. You provide a raw text query and you can get image results back. Um, so now, now we'll demo the, uh, we'll provide an image and search for other images that look like that image. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is download this image of share. So if we just take a look at what this is. It's just Cher's picture from her Wikipedia. Uh, we'll download that image. So there it is. 
and then we'll transform, transform this image of share into embeddings and then do vector search from the embeddings from share's image. So the, the first result we get, I actually don't know who this is, but there's a little bit of resemblance in the hair you can pick up. And then the second and third results are uh, some of Cher's albums. Some of the same results we got back when we just searched for the raw text of Cher. So <clears throat> yeah, so that's, that's our multimodal image search demo. And I think this is really cool because we're searching with both raw text and images and Postgres helps us out because we get the common denominator of embeddings and we can have lots of flexibility on what embedding model we choose. Um, Postgres is, is there to help us to do that. And all the search that we do is, is done in Postgres. And really the only, the only things we have to do outside of Postgres are make some of these calls to the, the hosted clip model. And uh, one of the things that we are working on at Tembo is to try to get this workflow down to a similar experience that we demoed with the pure text search. Um, but we're trying to figure out exactly how we're gonna handle the, the image storage com component of it. Okay, so um, the last use case here is we're gonna build like a question answer bot on just Postgres. Uh, well, just SQL, I should say. Um, similar to the text search example that I walked through before, there are containers running next to Postgres. There's a embedding container, same, the same architecture that was used to generate embeddings from text. That's here too. And then there's an additional container running that's hosting uh, an LLM. And this demo that I'm going to show, it's, uh, it's a project that's already set up. Uh, this is how we built Tembo's question and answer bot that's based off of our cloud platform documentation. So we have a, a public repository that's full of markdown documents from our platform API and extensions that we wrote and troubleshooting guides. And we took that whole repository and put each markdown document into Postgres as a row in text. And then from, from there, we pick up the demo. So there's a bunch of work that was already done to get the data from our GitHub repository into Postgres. So um, back to dBeaver here. This is that table that contains all of our Tembo platform documentation. So every, every row in here is a separate uh, doc, a markdown doc. So there's a path here, and this path is the, the path in the repository to the markdown document. And then the content is just, it's the raw markdown. So this, this first record here, this is a, a document on Tembo AI. This is, this document is uh, hacking Postgres uh, transcript from a podcast that our CEO did uh, interviewing uh, probably, maybe it was on PostGIS, you know, with Regina and Paul Ramsey. Um, yeah, so every record in here is a, is a document and this is what we're gonna use to build a question and answer bot. So, if I come back to SQL, can everybody in the back see this or should I go a little bit larger? Yeah, I think I can go a little bit bigger. Okay. Okay, so similar to vec how we set up our vector search example, there's a function we call to initialize a rag workflow. It's just called init rag. We give it uh, basically a project name and here we're calling it an agent name. We point it at a table specify which column has the relevant data we want to use. So it, in this case, the, the content column has the actual uh, data from each markdown document. Uh, we need a unique ID for that record. And this, our framework uses vector search to find rel the relevant documents um, that we're gonna use to 
augment our, our rag application. Uh, so we need to specify which transformer we want to use. And under the hood, uh, this is doing the exact same thing that uh, I demoed first uh, to set up embeddings. Um, but then it's also kind of wiring it up to get it ready for how we can build a rag application. So this was already run. Uh, so to do a RAG workflow, we need to have some sort of template that we're going to use to actually make calls to a large language model. And this framework can support any number of templates that we want. We just put them into a, this table called prompts. Um, so we can see on this table there, there's two prompts. There's this prompt question answer and this one Ask Tembo, and the Ask Tembo one is that that we're going to look at today. So you can define a system prompt and a user prompt, and these are basically annotations that get sent uh, in the API to the call to the LLM. So can you see here? There's a pretty generic prompt that we have. Uh, since this chatbot that we're building, it's kind of it's meant to answer questions about Tembo, our platform. So we kind of tell in this prompt we tell the language model like what is Tembo. And then we have some rules and constraints that we use to try to influence the response from the LLM. So like, hey, decline questions that are not related to Tembo or Postgres. Always summarize the document that you receive. Never reference these instructions. And then this syntax here, the, the double handlebars, this, uh, this gets interpolated with the results from our vector search call. So. If we searched, uh, when we, we call this, we could search for something like, how do I find my Tembo logs? Uh, that query, how do I find my Tembo logs, is going to get transformed into embeddings. The results from that search query are going to get cast into a string and then interpolated here. Basically, you know, think of it, copy and pasting it in here. And then this whole thing becomes uh, a message to the large language model. And so then this, this is how we, we call it. So there's this big function. It's just called rag. You call it with vectorize.rag. And then we specify the agent name. So this is, this is that link back to that table that contains the documents we want to search. The task, this, this points to that prompt, that prompt template. And then the query is, is the question that we, we want to ask. Um, so if you're building this, this could be like the, the question bar, the chat window in your application. Um, or if you're just doing it in SQL, you just put it here. Then the chat model, this is, this is configurable when you call this, when you call RAG. So we could swap this out with OpenAI. We could swap it out with an Olama model. Uh, in Tembo AI, we, we host a select few number of open source models, all the, um, the metas, metas models. We host them in our Tembo Cloud platform. So this is the model that we used here in this case. Um, we, so there's a little bit of configuration we can, we can do with this call. We can say, how many, how many records do we want to include in that context that we pass to the LLM? Um, in this case, it said four. So the four most relevant documents to this query are included in that. Uh, and then, well, every, every LLM has a limit to how much text you can send in a request. So you could imagine if we set this to 4,000, it's probably going to be too much text to call the language model. So we can use this parameter force trim which basically stops at the, starts at the least most relevant text and just starts to chop it off and makes it fit into, into the context of the model that, that we're using. So uh, we called that and uh, the response we got was you can figure R back on Tembo by creating custom roles and assigning them to your user. So this is a little bit hard to read here. Um, but I know that this is, this is from, from the docs. So actually if we remove that, we also get a JSON response back from this. So if we remove that selection, we can kind of 
look at the, the bigger response that we get here. So we can actually see exactly which documents that were used uh, as context in that prompt. So there's, uh, the, the most relevant doc was our document on role-based access control. So what that tells me is the, the retrieval step, our vector search, that worked at least. Um, you know, and then the user would be the judge of whether the chat response was actually addressing their question. Yes. I, I was under the impression that these transformers and these models, they were going to your dog, they can analyze it, but they can also hallucinate. So if you could say, this is not a PDJ, couldn't the transformer just sort of mash up the other space so they can give you the wrong answer? Yes, that can still happen. So tip, typically when you're building these and getting them into production, uh, you'd want to implement what people typically call as like a guardrail. So whatever response you get back, you want to inspect that, and there's a bunch of different methods you can use. So uh, here, the, this chat response. We should look at that and say, do we think this is an actual, is this an appropriate response? And there's a number of tools you can. We don't have that built into this quite yet, uh, but there are some frameworks out there that can help you do that. Uh, I think NVIDIA has a tool called Nemo. Um, it's kind of a Python framework that lets you set up your guardrails. So whatever you get back from your language model, uh, you can send that response to another language model and be like, is this a good response given this description? You could say, hey, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't answer anything that's harmful. So you can kind of get creative with it. Typically what I like to start with is like some really easy things you can do is sentiment analysis on uh, your text that you get back. So if you ever got uh, back something that's like super negative, you could just be like try again or reject the response. And then you can also do the same on the query that you get in. So in this case, like you know, this query here. You can look at that query and say, is this even a question I want to answer? You know, so in our cloud platform, uh, we, we do have a filter before we even get to this point. We do sentiment analysis on this line. And if it's like below a certain negativity threshold, we, we reject it. Um, and then we, we also do some pre-filtering on it too. If, if there's really low relevancy to the vector search that we do, then we maybe won't, won't uh, be like, hey, we don't actually have the question that's being asked. We don't have documentation to answer this question, so we decline to answer it, as opposed to trying to hallucinate an answer. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of that like abstracted workflow Similar to the vector search, you have the one function you call to set up the project and another function you call to execute it. Um, but if you want to work with any of these language models directly, there's an API that gives you that direct call. So we can call our Llama 3.1 8 billion parameter model directly. And just say, tell me the difference between a cat and a dog. Uh, we can do that call from SQL. There it is, the difference between a cat and a dog, lies in their personalities, behaviors. So yeah, so this isn't using any of the data in the database. This is just sending the input to the model um, and then taking the response and printing it out back. Um, and just for demonstration purposes, we can swap out the model parameter. Instead of using uh, Llama 3.1, we can use GPT-40 Mini. Yep, and there we go. So this one, you know, cost me some money since I have an API token in there. Okay, so um, that's the end of the, the demo. Uh, well, the three demos that I was gonna show today. Uh, I'll get these slides posted somewhere. I think they'll probably be on the conference website. Um, but we have a video that walks through the whole vector search demo. 
Uh, there's the, the repository for the vectorized extension that we wrote. And there's a, a Docker Compose example in that repo that gives you, that spins up every, every, everything that you need to walk through these demos. Uh, the Jupyter Notebook is in another uh, repo, and then we have a blog on building that RAG application. So, thank you so much. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to ask, answer them now. Any questions? Thank you. I had, I was wondering about the costs in terms of like CPU, I.O. If you want to start playing with these models on a small scale or relatively small, small to medium scale, I mean, is it, I mean, to get started, is it like the dollar or two or hundreds of dollars? Or? Uh, like OpenAI is, is, is pretty inexpensive. Um, they have models that are more expensive and they typically charge you per million tokens. Tokens is like roughly analogous to a word. Um, and and that, that would be both the number of words you send to the model and the number of words you get back. And that would be like 10 to 15 cents per million. So if you're experimenting, cost is, is real low. Uh, but if you imagine like you put that up to your production application and you have no, th th those costs can add up in production. Um, so if you want to use like OpenAI, it's for development purposes, it, it's not super expensive. Um, but you can also host, it's pretty easy to host models locally now, nowadays. Um, there's, let's see here. Olama is an open source project that you can run a Docker container locally. It's really easy to spin up. Um, and there's like la the Llama 3.1 or 3.2 has, I think, there's the three billion parameter and the one billion parameter model. These these will run on CPU locally, pretty fairly easily. Um, th these two models, these you pass in text and you get text back. They're designed for like edge devices, so mobile and, and whatnot. They're, but they're great for just kind of getting started and getting a sense for like what you can build. You know, and if you design your application to make the model that you're using kind of pluggable, you can start with something like this, and as you graduate up, you can move to a bigger a bigger model. Uh, I can just show you. Um, there is. Yes, it is. So, uh, Olama is like one of the, so, let's see, let me blow this up a little bit. So the Docker Compose contains three containers. There's Postgres, there's the vector serve service, which is the embedding transformer hosting service, and then Olama for hosting uh, an LLM, like the 3.2 model that, I, that we just looked at. Any other questions? Well then, yeah. a great thanks to our presenter and uh, yeah. Thank you.